everybody, this is Amy. Welcome to my channel. Tonight I'm going to be doing another holiday design and this is going to be something a little bit more unique um, than what I've done in the previous videos this week. It's going to have a lot of different greens in it and it's just going to be I'm winging it pretty much. I'm going to be using this candle holder slash uh, what else could you use this for? If you're do, doing a candy bar, you could put candy in it. You could do it as a centerpiece. Just a, a versatile piece. Alright, I'm going to be using Happy Green. I'm going to be using Peridot. All these are folk art paints. Some are enamels and some are the multi-surface. I'll be doing th Thicket. Hunter Green and Bright Green. Like I said there's a lot of greens. Burnt Umber, Engine Red, and Berry Wine. Tools I'm going to be using on this project are once again flat brushes. Number 12, it's a one stroke. Very messy brush, but that's how, what happens once you're using them a lot. Number 10, I might use this one, I'm not 100%, but it's a liner, number one liner by Plaid. These are all one stroke brushes. And then my uh, dotting stylus is one or two that I might be using. I didn't use it in my sample that I made, but I will possibly be using it tonight. We'll see how it goes. Alright, so on my sample I didn't really do it this way, but I'm going to tonight. I am just going to be painting the front part of this face, and I will be using, I'm just going to touch it into the, the brown, and I am just going to be using this as a guideline, and it's not going to be one that I have to stick to. I can add to it as I'm painting. Um, it's just, again, a guideline that I'm putting on here, and you'll see what I mean, because as I'm painting, I will be kind of moving around and adding things and, and such, and not necessarily staying right with this. Now this would be a pretty pattern to do around the whole, the whole glass. If I were painting this glass, for myself or as a gift I would paint it all the way around just for the mere fact is if it is being used as a candle holder it would look nice no matter which direction it's being used in and I think that's important all right so with that being said let's go ahead and get started into the leaves again this is going to be a variety of leaves and different shapes, some that I am just going to be, like I said, just kind of winging it, and you'll see what I mean. Now like on this one, I'm just going to be putting leaves just every so often here on this branch. I'm trying not to make this video too long because I do have quite a few leaves to paint. I am, with this design, just going to be touching into the different greens and painting. You can do it, if you do this design, you can do it however you want to do it. So I'm not going to be specific with the paint colors just for that reason. Um, because I, I don't want you to be kind of hung up on that you have to be using a certain color or uh, brush or whatnot. You can use really whatever you want. The purpose of this is to make different shape leaves and for them to be you know not real consistent. You know when you're you're doing this you can you know, make them different shapes, stuff that you're not really used to seeing. I did pull some paint into that. Not my typical one-strokey type leaves at all. 
and then they're not meant to be. This is just meant to be very random and just kind of go as you as you can type of design with nothing being really the same. I mean it can be, but it doesn't have to be. That's the importance of it is it does not have to be the same. It doesn't have to be a Christmas shape. I'm going to come down here and then kind of add some more in here with this color. And this color is the Happy Green. And pretty much by itself. I might be tipping it in a little bit into the white, but it's pretty much by itself. And just doing random style, random style leaves. So with this design though, I want to try to make the colors that I'm using kind of hit or miss, kind of you know, spread out through the design. So they're not all bunched up in one spot. And you can do this when you're doing it, you can pull it towards the towards the branch or away from the branch. It doesn't matter either way. Because you know, depending on the direction you're doing these, it will give it a different look. And that's just that's just perfect. I mean, you don't want everything to look the same. On this one, I'm going to kind of tap in with the this is the hunter green, which I'm not a big fan of the hunter green, but with it being Christmas, that's what it because it reminds me of a Christmas color. So that's one reason why now here on this branch, I'm pulling it towards the branch. Again, you get different looks based on if you're pulling towards the branch or if you're pulling away from the branch. All right, so we're going to go back here. And again, we're going to start putting in some different shapes. If you like this video, make sure you give me a big thumbs up. Especially if you're not wondering why I'm doing it like this. And hopefully when I get done it will look as pretty as I felt my actual template did, but we'll see. <laughs> we'll see, because it is definitely different. See, with this it's kind of easy because you're just really kind of maneuvering your brush and just trying to make a leaf design of some sort. It doesn't have to be anything specific. Matter of fact, it's fine if it's not. You know, if it's unique, the more unique the better. That's how I look at it. Because you're really just trying to get some different style leaves in here that aren't the norm. I like this one is just kind of taking its own life here. And I'm not really worried too much right now about pulling in any type of uh, stems or whatnot into these. I'm not really too concerned about that right now. So really this kind of a project is a great one to practice leaf shapes. Because you know, there's only a f you know, there's only so many shapes you can do with a leaf. And this type of a project is easier to do with watercolor because 
of how the watercolor reacts, but I hope you understand the reason why I'm creating this. You can make them thin, like that, or thinner. I guess it's not really that thin. Then we can go back here. Oh, I didn't get into the peridot yet either. Like I said, there's so many different greens. There really is. What I'm using is just kind of touching the tip of the iceberg. And you really don't even have to do this with, you know, using a different color, you know, with it, two colors or whatnot. You could do this with really, you know, do them as single color leaves if you want. And that's fine too. And let's see, I'm doing the peridot now, which is a little bit thinner because it's a, it's a metallic paint. So... It's not a thin, or not a thick paint, so it may come off a little differently. We have to work with it a little bit. And like I said, the more room you have to work on a design like this, the better off it will be, because it will give you more opportunity to put more in your design. Whereas with this right now, it's pretty much just a, you know, just trying to fit as much in here as I can to make it more random or look more random possible without getting smushing the other paint that I've done. Just throw some of these in here. And it's something I like to bring up as much as possible is when you're doing gloss painting, make sure that you clean off your glass. You can wash it in warm water, you know, warm water with soap and, and such and then dry it. You can also, in addition to that, or instead of, clean it off with rubbing alcohol. But it is very important that you clean it because you want to make sure that the paint will adhere to your project so that it, it you know, has better grip by you cleaning it. Very, very important. Now I'm just going to put some of these in here. I got some other color in there. That's fine. It's kind of neat looking actually with the green in it. But you can see where you can just randomly do this. I mean, it, it's, I'm just doing it as I go. No certain pattern. I'm trying to make sure that I get a little bit of these colors in you know, periodically throughout the project so that it makes sense and they're balanced a little bit. But there's no, like I said, you don't have to do it a definite, a different way. It just, start painting, I guess is my thing. Just start painting. And then just kind of step back and see where you might want to add some other colors. You might want to add some more of the whimsical kind of branches that just come down. You can make these brown, you can make them green, make them thinner, you can make them thicker. Just really doesn't matter. Okay, and I'm just going to pull these periodically down the down the stem.
I guess that you can make them thicker. You can do some reverse painting. Kind of put those in here. Those have my white. Made it a little bit thicker. I'm going to put some white touches in here. Like that. And see, so far, I think we're getting a good look. What do you think? Are you liking it so far? And it's not not identical to my to my sample by any means that I did, but I do like it. And I apologize for the noise in the background. That is my furnace. I am down in my utility room. Is where I typically will paint. So unfortunately, I do have that that happening right now. Okay, so on this one I want to try to make it look just like that. But the problem I'm having is definitely when you're doing painting, painting on paper or like canvas, so much easier than when you're painting on glass. If you're an experienced glass painter, you'll know what I mean by that. Um, definitely take some practice. Not that it's hard, because I'm not saying that. It's just that it's different, and you may have to work at it a little bit. So on these, what I did is I mixed a little bit of brown into my thicket green, and I'm just trying to do just a very simple leaf with a pointed edge, or pointed tip, I mean. But the problem I'm having here is that I want it to be a little bit more opaque. So I am putting in some white and then just painting that on it and then mixing it together. And I'm going to do that. I just sporadically place some of these that looks like I'm done that, throughout my design. Just a few. Not a lot, just a few. And just to give it tip there, come down. So that's why I say with these you're not doing your typical one stroke kind of um, stroke work. I'm just really painting and creating the, the actual design of the leaves. And then I might want to come in here. Let's see where I want to put one of these at. Put like that. And then just bring it, just kind of tipping it and bringing it out. And then I'm going to grab some white this time, add into it. You can do this too with a round brush. I think sometimes you, if you have a good round brush, you can get this type of a shape with that brush. And if I were trying to do one stroke, I could get the shape, but I'm not really trying to do one stroke on this. I am just trying to paint the leaves. Just kind of tap it in. That gives it more of an opaque look. Again, I'm not going to do a ton of these. I'm just doing a few. And then I can clean my brush off if I want to maybe do some a little bit of stroke work like I'm adding it. I'm trying to do it very lightly because I don't want to make the stem thick. But I want it to look like it's kind of connecting in here somehow. It's off the vine. Yeah, I hope you like this. I hope you do. I kind of messed that one up. Fix this one here. brush is pretty full of paint. Alright, so so far this is what we have going on. And I'm going to do another I'm going to do some of these. This little put 
little sprigs coming out. And you'll see what I do with them here in a little bit. Now I'm not making them very, very thick. Just making them a little thin. And that's intentional. However, um, you do need to be careful because if it's not a good thickness, then it could actually, um, you know, could actually scratch off. So that's one thing you have to be careful with. Come over here. I'm gonna visit this one again. Got the hair on there. Just putting a couple holes in there. I might could put in another color too. I don't really, it doesn't have to be, yeah, I think I like it better without that. Alright, let's see where else we need to go here. I think I might want to Make this come down a little bit too, down here. I'm trying to think which colors I use. Alright, on this one, I'm just going to pull them like that. I hope I'm getting all this in here. I think I'm so focused on what I'm doing that I may not be. Apologize if that's the case. See what else I need. A little darker there. Um, I'm going to just maybe put some of the darker, a little bit darker, in here. Like I said, the main thing is just to make it make sense. But I don't want to do too much because I do just like it you know, like this. Yes, yeah, so I want to make those a little bit more opaque looking. So again, you can go over them if you feel the need. Just to make them, make them look the way you want. Do the little holes in here. like I'm taking paint off. I don't know what's going on here. Okay, that's a little bit thicker. Alright, then the next thing I want to do is go through I might need to add let me see here. I don't want to I'm afraid to sit this down. Let me stand it up. I'll be safer that way. Put some more wicker white on here because I want to put some little berries in here. really want a bunch of green in it. Now berry wise, I think I've done this. You know what? Let me try. I might find a little brush. Let me try one of these little brushes and see how they work. Because I want to do berries but I don't want them to be huge. So I'm trying, I don't even know what the brush this is, I found it. But the thing of it is with the brushes, this is a really tiny one, is I'm trying to make little berries, but I don't want them to be huge. But I also want them to look, you know, cute, obviously. I'm going to put a little white in here. I'm just trying to make them circular looking. They don't have to be specific. We'll just get it going here. So we'll have the red and green, which are the Christmas colors. And then we're just going to have a 
a spray of different shaped leaves. <clears throat> Excuse me. And you can use, if you want to just do dotting tools and, and do dots, you can do that too. They have a tendency to make my berries pretty big. And then I'm thinking, I don't really want them that large. If you're painting anything for the holidays, can you share down below what, what your projects are? I'd love to hear what everybody is working on. And hope you are throwing some of your talent into making gifts. It's always special. And my gifts are always special. Always, always, always. And I'm just going to... I think my dog's into something upstairs. She's something else. I've mentioned her a few times on my videos. <laughs> oh my goodness. She's a blue healer mix and she likes a lot of attention. And she's going to get it from you whether she's it's good attention or bad. It doesn't matter. It's like a little kid. And of course, she's a very smart dog, so that doesn't help matters. Your dog can outsmart you. It's kind of, uh, yeah, how she rolls. So, just saying. Very smart dog and gets under everything. And she is two years old. She's not a baby anymore. But you wouldn't know it. I think those are cute berries. What do you think? I'm happy. Very happy with them. My other ones were so big. And that's why I say I'm happy to try it like this. And you can tap in some white with it. And I might go back in and do that too. I mean, I did have some white in some of them, but I mean, as far as I think the white gives it maybe a sense of reflection. And I'm just putting these in just um, randomly, obviously. And, you know, really when you're doing this, stand back, take a look at it, and see if you need to add more, if you need to spread them out more. Because, you know, you want it to look realistic, and you want color, color-wise, you want it to be where it makes sense, you know, design-wise and that you're you know, making it balanced as much as possible. I'm trying to add in some light. You can wait till it dries too if you want to go back over it once it dries. Might be a better opportunity for adding adding some white to them. Especially the way I'm painting these right now, since I'm just kind of tapping them in. Alright, so there you have that. And that's what I'm saying. If you wanted to maybe put some up here, which I could. Actually, I do see I put a branch up here for them, so that'll help. And you can make your, your brown branches thicker or, you know, add more paint to them, maybe add some white to them so that they're more dominant than what they are. They're too thin, really. 
but like I said, I'm sure you get the gist of it by seeing the video. If you feel like it needs more, then definitely add more. I was pretty much using them as a guideline. I'm trying to tap in some white again. I like odds. I'm trying to keep it that way. Alright, so we do have some of that four for those, let me see here. And I might just keep it that way. I don't want to get too many in here. And I could add some, like up in here, maybe even put some on the actual greenery. That'd make it look pretty. And then with these berries, I'm using the berry wine on some of them and the wicker white and the engine red. And if you don't like them on the greenery, then you know, by all means don't put them on there. I thought this would just give it a little bit more balance. Put some white down in here. And the one thing that you could do, I mean, you could see where waiting till it dries would help. But anyhow, what you could do is take this little brush, the little liner brush that I mentioned, and just do some some little lines. Well, I guess it must be so little that I can't see it. You know, just do some little, like you're doing little stems to them. Just make them look like they're part of the part of the little branch that they're on. And that too you could actually use it to make your branch a little thicker if you wanted. I'm just gonna leave it leave it alone, leave it as is. And you're not gonna see a stem on each one of them. Some of them are bunched together, but you get the gist, right? You get the gist, I'm pretty sure. Leave those alone. I did those already. I'm going to come up here and do this, do that. Do this one, that one, this one, that one, this one, this one. And then up here, because I did do a little brown here, we can do that, that, and just make it look like it came from that. And then maybe make a little bit of a branch coming out that way. So I say with the liner brush, you could make these a little thicker if you wanted to do that. And I just used the chis chisel edge, so that was fine. But you can go in and, and fill these in a little bit more. If you get your leaves, you know, like the leaves are touching and you can't see the brown, you know, then just take it in, fill it in. Not a big deal. Not a big deal at all. And just go in and clean it up. Or you can let them on top of it. It doesn't matter. Yeah, I like these, you know, if you wanted to make them look a little bit more, you know, a little thicker, a little bit more pronounced, you, know, you definitely can go back in and, and add to them if you choose so. If you choose to do so, if not, it's fine. Alright, so I really didn't use the dotting tool, but what you could do if you felt like it, you know, maybe add some additional color to this piece with the dots. Yeah, just kind of vary where you're putting them. They don't have to be all over the place. You can just primarily put them 
in different spots. Sorry, definitely all over the place with this space. Um, and then if you want to put more color, come down here, dot it in. If you don't, then just leave it alone. Not required. Just something extra if you want to. And there you be. Or, again, you can just use these to make berries with. Make them just little. Alright, that's my design for today. And, again, it's just my rendition of putting some different leaves together. Not one stroke, just, you know, painting them in. And whatever shape you want, whatever size, just doing it. So, there you go. If you try to create a piece like this, I'd love to see pictures. Visit my Facebook page and feel free to post on there. I would love to see your work. Alright, again, if you like this video, please make sure you give me a big thumbs up. If you're new to my channel, make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell. And when the video is over, I'd appreciate you hitting the share button and sharing this video with all your friends and family on your social network. That would be awesome. I'd appreciate it. Alright, thanks again so much for stopping by and visiting. And until the next time, you have a good one.